Let me say this to start. I'm Internet Personality Vangelis, and I'm here with an SIC review of Kamen Rider Zeronos and Deneb. And my ticket to the Zero Liner was provided by HLJ. These guys are from what I refer to as the third generation of SIC, that being the awesome durable one. Uh, you can't tell from uh, this meager vantage point, but these two guys are built way the hell more solidly than a lot of my older SICs. Like Deneb face planting there, comedic as it was, if he was an older SIC, he might have exploded on the table. Well, that's exaggerating a little bit, but uh, these guys are a lot more durable and a lot more toy-like than older SICs. And they're a pretty imposing duo on their own. SIC Common Riders are fairly tall. They're a lot taller than figure arts. In fact, if I were to give them a closer scale buddy, it would be the Masters of the Universe Classics. Even then, they have a, a little bit of height on those guys, too. I mean, Masters of the Universe Classics are a bit stockier, but as you can see, your given SIC rider is going to be able to look Hordak right in the face um, and then get skronked at. It's not fun getting scrunched by Hordak, but, you know, that's what happens. Anyway, let's take a closer look at one of them. Let me say this to start. Oh, come on, I, I didn't keep up that Rage Agito thing, did I? Well, yeah, I made a GIF and a, and a video clip, but I... What do you mean? I don't have many... Okay, I, I, I have them right here. Sorry... Anyway, the whole point of this exercise was to inform you that his pointing finger here is a unique hand and a one-off hand. And it's the only one with no matching uh, other hand. So it's there just for signature poses. Swapping hands on current SICs is delightfully simple. It's a peg and post system and it's very solid. Nothing feels like it's going to break. The only problem is that nothing really holds this, this wristband on, so you got to be a bit careful. Also, all the hands have a uh, hinge at the connection point, but most of them you can't use unless you pull them out slightly. So you got to push it in, pull it out just a little bit when you want to bend it left and right. Being an SIC figure, you can tell that Zeranos has a very stylized design compared to his uh, actual suit in the television series. And, oddly enough, the thing about all these Deno guys is they got pointy-ass shoes. But the detail and paintwork is really nice to look at. I love how this guy turned out. Deno was not a series that I thought I would see get turned into a badass techno-time-traveling steampunk array of action suits. Even the belt is kind of pumped up a little bit. The steampunky and chunky SIC-ness is very evident in its design. Also mounted on the sides are the components of the Zero Gasher Weapons System. And what really helps out the design here is that these flaps they're mounted on are actually fully posable. So you can get them out of the way for posing or you can just have them kind of flap in the wind. Although in the case of this part, it's so enormous that it still looks a little bit silly there. I'm just going to remove them for now and let you know about the other thing on the belt, which is the little card holder. This comes with a single card inside. The card is unbelievably tiny, thin, plastic, and losable. Um, it's also not really able to fit inside the belt, although the instructions would argue otherwise. I once managed to jam this in far enough to get that kind of stylized A effect, and it took me 20 minutes and a pair of pliers to get it back out. This slit that it goes into doesn't run all the way through the belt. It actually has two different slits, and neither of them are very comfortable to stick this in. Uh, this gimmick just didn't really turn out. On the bright side, you can tilt the wheel, although the the wheel does like to fall out if you don't do it very carefully. And that's cool enough, but uh, really the belt is much better as a piece of ornamentation than as a piece of action-y gimmickry. But what succeeds at action-y gimmickry? The Zero Gasher Weapon System? These two pieces can more or less be combined in two different ways to form a crossbow or big-ass sword. And what's fun about the crossbow is that when you put it together, this part actually transforms physically. It's very finicky, but when you can do it correctly, you get a really big crossbow. And one of the spare pairs of hands is these holding things hands. Now, there is a small problem with these, which is that 
Uh, they are designed to more or less be bent open to hold things. The thing is, the plastic does not have very much give, and it's a little bit scary to do that. Also, the thumb has been sculpted extremely close to the fingers, uh, in part to allow for this hand to hold onto the card, and it does so quite well. Uh, you gotta hand it to that. Uh, but I would have been okay giving that up in order to make this a little bit less scary, because as you can see, you've got to kind of, uh, stuff the hand into the grip, and then it really unhappily starts to bend around all over the place. Uh, this is easily one of the biggest weaknesses, is that getting the weapons into the, the grips is frightening at times. But once you do it, it's very solid, and even though these things kind of fall apart a little bit, um, they don't break. The components just sort of come to pieces. And I do like that this doesn't break. Older SICs, I would have been worried about this all just actually snapping to pieces. So, props there. And once you do get the weapons all together and start mounting the hands and things, this figure uh, becomes extremely fun. Uh, aside from the holding things hands, he also has a pair of open hands, which are a nice balance between calm and action-y so that they can really fulfill any number of posing needs. I like how modular their pose is, because this hand can, can be very calmly hanging there, it can be part of an action pose where Yuto is swinging the Zero Gasher around, ready to chop up some fools, or you can even have him kind of balance the weapon with this hand. It's a, it, it works for a lot of different poses, and I, I do like how it turned out. This pose is horrible, by the way. My favorite way to pose this dude is uh, just with the sword slung over his shoulder. I do like how Alteriform turned out. Alteriform with the sword, uh, in particular, is really good action figure times. He can point his sword at people. Well, kind of. The arm can only hold... Actually, no, the arm can hold it all the way up. He can totally point his sword at some fools. Are you a fool? I hope not. The body's posability is overall quite solid, with a decent ball neck, uh, really good ball shoulders, with this excellent gimmick where you can swivel this covering up to fill in however much of a gap you have there between the ball joint and the socket. Uh, the double-jointed elbows on a nice thick hinge, the aforementioned wrist joints. He's got an ab crunch, but it doesn't entirely work. Uh, it's there, but the ri the waist is, is very strange, especially since the belt is on its own separate plate, and it's very hard to get things to be all symmetrical here, uh, especially with the kind of panel-y look of his uh, crotch. But his hip joints are quite open. He's got, again, nice thick, thick double-jointed knees. Uh, the ankles are posable, but they're a little bit loose at times, and they got this really pointless toe joint that doesn't accomplish too much. He also has a weird leftover gimmick from uh, some of the other Deno bodies, because they share legs, and one Deno release was designed, as far as I can recall, uh, the sword form platform to let you swap colors here to, to go between different forms. They cause a really cool transparency effect with the color beneath, and I kind of like how that looks. But I'm getting a bit hungry. Let's go see what Deneb is up to. Deneb! That basket of candy's gonna bring my diabetes back! But it's also chock full of accessories. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, though. First thing I want to do is uh, tell you all about Deneb's hands, because he's got a bunch of them. To start off, he has these kind of halfway splayed, halfway open hands, which they get the job done, but you'll soon see that they're a little bit pointless. His main accessory hands would be one of his signature poses, that being the pew pew I'm a shoot you pose. Uh, Deneb's hands swap just like Xeronos's, and uh, they similarly tend to have a joint in the wrist, but the pew pew hands uh, do not. The whole point of these hands are for him to point at people and then shoot them with the bullets that are in his fingers. But the hands that kind of nullify these ones, these weird little open hands, are his other pair of hands, uh, which are similarly more or less open. Uh, what these have, though, aside from their normal wrist joint, is they have uh, a full knuckle joint that can close up all the way, and a ball joint on the thumb. So these hands are kind of like those other ones, only they do more, and they more or less look the same, except the, the fingers are a little bit more together in the sculpt. These kind of nullify those other ones, and those other ones could have been used for other parts that this guy could have had. So I'm not really digging those other hands. These ones, though... These are great. What's also great is his posability, at least in the upper body. I'll get to the lower body in a second. But uh, his head joint is kind of interesting. It seems limited at first, until you move it up beyond a certain point. Then suddenly it opens up a whole new world of looking all over the place. His arms are not limited at all by the cape uh, and the cowl. I do like that. 
Uh, and the double jointed, uh, thick double jointed elbows are again present, so you can do all kinds of wickety keen action bang bang poses. And to lend to that, he also has a full waist uh, rotation y thing. It's again not quite an ab crunch, even though I'm pretty sure there's one in there somewhere. It gets a little bit blocked up by the rather delightfully sculpted and carried out transparent green deal on his torso. So I'm okay sacrificing a little bit of uh, yoga possibilities to look this nice. His head, too, uh, looks gorgeous. This is the Deneb head, SIC eyes. It's a little bit threatening, but at the same time, it's still imminently kind and kind of wants to be your friend. And just as he's able to pull some really cool gunslinger poses, he can also look very uh, meek and helpful. His legs are poseable. Um, they have double-jointed knees. They've got a lot of sculpting, actually, down here. A bit of a better ankle joint than Zeronos himself. Um... An equally useless toe joint, though. Thing is that when you look at the way that they're worked in with this this skirt, the skirt just doesn't really work for toys. This does turn out better than the figure arts version, and I do like that the slits let you have him at least be in kind of running poses. But uh, if you want to have him doing the classic Deneb, uh, you know, kneel down and serve you some tea, you're going to have his skirt splayed out all over the place in several sections. It just doesn't look very good, especially from a top-down view. It's like he's a, a death blossom. The other problem with his legs is that due to how you're trying to line everything up to look nice underneath this skirt, you're trying to get the skirt sculpting to line up so it looks like it's a closed piece, uh, you're standing them all up just perfectly fine, like, all right, this is great, then you get his ankles wrong and you don't notice it because everything looks fine, and boom, he goes down. So he's got a little bit of balancing issues. Uh, his ankles, maybe if you put add some super glue in here, I don't know, I wouldn't want to, because they're fine, it's just that it's hard to orient everything and take into account the cape and keep him from, you know, squatting everywhere. It's uh, a difficulty that comes with Deneb. But you'll forget those difficulties pretty fast if you dig his accessories as much as I do. Thanks to those superior poseable hands, he can actually hold this serving tray. Uh, nothing on here comes off, though. It's all a single sculpted piece, but let me tell you, it looks really well done. He also comes with a large rice ball, which he can also hold. Uh if you're really into that kind of thing. Are you? His final large accessory is his legendary basket, which he can hold in the graspy superior hands. Are you ready for these goodies? Let's get Deneb out of the way and dig in. Now, what I really like about this is it's not obvious what comes out of that basket until you tip it over and you see that one of each type of candy comes out. The little wrappered candies, the suckers, and uh, the Deneb lollipops. Uh, these are lovely. Uh, it's, it's extremely tiny, tiny accessories, though. Nearly as small as the card. They're extremely easy to lose. And rounding off the extremely tiny components count would be the mysterious watch. This watch is a final and highly relevant accessory to add into this set, and I also kind of like how they did the look of it having a kind of transparent dome. Uh, they couldn't get little clock hands painted in there, but, you know, that would be unbelievably tiny. Deneb does have one other major function. Look after Yuto! Now, I wish I could tell you the band I did this full-on crazy thing where little bullheads actually run down the tracks on Xeranos' helmet and, and transform back and forth into eyepieces and all that, but they don't. They actually give you an entirely separate head if you're anal enough to want to represent these few seconds of interim. Uh, the actual head here, you just have to pull the front goggles off. While deep down I had hoped for the Sochok Henshin style of having more armor clamp on top of the armor, instead we've just got to simply swap pieces out to reveal a very terrifying lungless man that we then apply the Vega form armor over top of. Again, this is nicer than older SICs because all the parts swapping doesn't feel like anything's gonna break. The ball joint that the head plugs on and off of even feels more solid than most of the ball joints in my Garo equipment props. Let me say this to start. The face in his chest is not the same as this fi- Alright, never mind! Vega form in SIC form is scary. I love the glower of the drill goggles on the front of the mask. Even though you're only swapping a little bit of this guy's body around, he does look very different. 
Um, the back plate is actually composed of multiple pieces. The cape is sculpted so it'll look like one piece most of the time, unless you start moving things and you realize there are two pieces. It's very naturally done and is actually in stark contrast, effectiveness-wise, uh, compared to Deneb's skirt. This is really well done, all things considered. Also, the uh, finger cannons up on the top of his shoulders are on ball joints and can move around to be ambulant or... Uh, launch assaults of finger bullets at whatever it is you choose. None of his posability has been altered from Altair form. All the uh, torso joints and everything are still in place, although he's a lot heavier in the chest now, and if his leg joints do get looser over time, that could serve to be an issue. Uh, of course, a large caped common rider with a broadsword is pretty badass, but... A large caped common rider with an enormous ludicrous techno crossbow is is actually, I, I, I think he's roundabouts the same level of uh, terrifying. Um, it looks really cool. Vega form is, uh, I think, the make or break of this. Deneb, you know, uh, whatever he turned out as, I think, would have not really entered into this so much as, does this pull off both Xeranos forms? And this really does. Although these things do sit up a little bit high, I kind of wish that uh, this gap here was gone. They look a little bit stilted up there, and I don't see why they couldn't hug down on his shoulders anymore, because there's no transformation involved in those parts. I suppose it's a small issue that uh, it's hard to get him to cross his arms or stuff like that. His chest armor pieces, both of them, are quite thick and uh, will hinder that effort. Nonetheless, though, I kind of like how he turned out. But how did the two-pack turn out as a two-pack? Its faults are very minor. Uh, the sticky uppy shoulder cannons on Vega form, the loose ankles, Deneb's skirt being the best it really can be, but still weak in any kind of sitting or kneeling pose. But those are very trivial compared to the number of pluses in this particular two-pack. And again, as I said, it's such a nice standalone set. The Deno SICs have a bit of a habit now and then of mixing together two characters in their two-packs who kind of don't have a lot to do with each other in the bigger picture. In this case, you get everything you need for some good old-fashioned Yuto and Deneb Xeranos adventures. Xeranos fans, this is absolutely recommended. It's also a great way to check out the modern SIC stylings, if you can find it for a comfortable price. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelus. It's just about that time, so I've got to grab my ticket for the Zero Liner. But until next time, I... What? What are you... What are you doing? Deneb!